Hello, my name is Angela Setra. It's the last day of the National Youth Conference and we're officially closed. Yes, I know it's really sad. However, we have some good news today. We're here at the East Midlands Conference Centre here in Nottingham University and I'm privileged to have with me a very special guest, my own father, Reverend Dr. Benjamin Deborah, who is our National Youth Pastor. Hello, Pastor Ben. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. So I just want to ask you a few questions. Um, one thing that I'm really interested in knowing, I'm sure most of us youth are, is that I know you started off um, as a founding leader, actually, in um, Crawley PIWC, yeah. and then moved into full-time full ministry in mm. Birmingham, mm. and eventually becoming our national youth pastor, which we've really enjoyed the time you've, you've been spending with us so far. What was that transition like for you? moving from um, the, the position of, you know, founding leader, from maybe deacon even, elder, you know, to now becoming the national youth pastor? Um, well, that's history. Um, I, I think it's all, in this country, one thing we've learned about this feed, what was it? Feed seed, and environment. Seed, feed and environment. And uh, so um, a lot of things together makes us up. You know, so the seed in terms of where we're coming from, the, the, the appearance, where they left us, our grandparents, where they've left us with, and then also the things we've fed on over the years, and then the environment we've developed. So it's molded our life up until now. Um, when I was in the country, um, I came to UK in 1999, and then eventually found myself in Crowley working as a pharmacist. And then myself and my wife, um, by the grace of God, started a local church of a church of Pentecost there, the Crowley PIWC. Um, and then in four years or so, we're called into full time ministry. And our first station was Birmingham. We pastored Birmingham for four years and were sent to London. Um, we've been in London for the past uh, three, just about three years. And um, my role currently is a national youth pastor, and each one of them has required a different set of grace and skill. Um, but as I said earlier, a lot of those things are inbuilt. They are put in you from the beginning. And the Lord breathes upon you at every time and causes it to, to flourish. You know? So um, they've not been the same rules, but it's been grace given us for different things. So we're very grateful to God for the strength, the wisdom, and the, and the anointing to do what we do, what we do now. Um, I think that's what I want to say. Yeah, it's really interesting that you said that actually because at this youth conference we've been taught and there's, there's been a lot of teaching going on um, to our young people to help us, to help us become, um, be, be ready basically for yeah. you know the times when we will have to take over yeah. from when you guys retire. Yeah. So um, I think I'm not retiring soon. <laughs> not retiring yeah. soon. Yeah. Yes, but it's been it, just like you said. This, at this time of our life, having that foundation and having these teachings to help us to, you know, you know, cultivate the um, the gifts that God has given to us for the future. And um, talking about the future, actually, Church of Pentecost UK just uh, celebrated its 25th yeah, yeah, anniversary. Yeah. Yes, which is really good to hear. Um, in terms of the church moving forward. What role would you like to see the youth, um, this generation of youth, play in um, the years to come in terms of making the church more diverse, more professional, more spirit-filled, and um, you know, making a stand in the UK? Um, the youth of this generation are actually the church itself. So it's, I'm not even looking too far into the future. As I said in this closing session, I, you know, what we see is how church is going to be like from this point onwards. So um, most churches, especially the PIWCs, are made up of our youth, young people. And so I'm not really expecting anything radical. It's just it's a, it's an organic change. People just growing, going back from here, doing stuff in the local churches, you know, and um, just seeing the transition taking place. But when it's something that is very radical, it, cre it creates conflict, you know. So when people just step up and do what they can do at their own jet, their own level, and uh, we see things happen. So I'm just hoping that people would go from here and do stuff as they've learned it, and gradually we'll see the change. It doesn't need to be a radical 
change. Let's move all the elders. Let's bring some new guys to stuff. No, just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Let somebody start a map in Croydon. Somebody starts a media stuff in Nottingham. Somebody starts some music thing in Fountain Gate. Somebody's doing some university work in Dundee. Somebody somebody doing something in Cardiff. All together, you see the change taking place all over the nation. So I think that's what I'm expecting to happen from this point onwards. Mm. Thank you so much, Pastor Ben. You've said a lot, and we've learned a lot from this conversation. I know I have, and I know that I'm eager to take home everything that I've learned here and apply it in my life, in every area of my life, in my university life, as we should, um, wherever we find ourselves, making sure that we use these gifts that has been imparted into us. And like Pastor Ben said, not a radical change, but taking it step by step and allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us and to impart our generation. Thank you so much, Pastor Ben. Can I make a final word? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I have something to say. Okay. <laughs> um, we, we, we want to thank God for what is done in this youth conference. NYC 15 has been fantastic. One of the most successful conferences we've organized um, to date. But there is more to come. It can get better and better and better and better in the years that are ahead. You know, one thing we've learned from this conference is the grace of God and teamwork. Respecting people's giftings and people's abilities and everybody just working together to achieve, you know, things for God. So I want to encourage the youth. But I said in a closing session, one thing is integrity. Psalm 78 verse 72. Integrity of hearts. Everybody must walk in righteousness, in holiness, in purity, in blamelessness. And then number two, we must increasingly get skillful. We must be excellent in the way we do stuff. We cannot be lousy. We, you talked about professionalism, you know. We must really bring quality to the way we do things in church. So when people walk into the church, in fact, in the Old Testament, if you look at the temple, the design, the goal, it was the, the pride of Israel and the attraction for the nations. People came to Jerusalem just to see the temple, you know. And that's how church should be. The Old Testament tabernacle, even though, wonderful the temple, was in the center of the camp. And the glory of God was upon the thing. So wherever you are, you could see it. That was what Balaam saw from a hilltop and wanted to curse and he couldn't curse. So when you walk into a meeting like this and it's a Christian group, the quality, the grace, the beauty, the harmony should, should bring glory to God. So let's, let's trust God, first of all, with purity of hearts. Young people, purity, integrity, righteousness. And then secondly, let's bring skill and quality to the way we do things, to the glory of God. And when we do these things, Jesus will be known throughout the nation. Because the intention is that before Jesus comes very soon, the whole nations of the world will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. And we pray that God will give us grace to accomplish that. As a sign of, I want to thank all the media team, you know, the technical people who have worked behind this conference to make it a great success. I can't really mention all your names, you know, but I want to say thank you all. And God bless you for the work that you have done. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bless you. You've heard it from here. It's the end of NYC 2015. It's the end of NYC 2015. I had to repeat that because I had to tell myself that we've come to an end. It's true. Um, it can be seen as a sad thing. However, it's an exciting thing for us, knowing that we're going out to the world and we're going to do as Jesus instructed us to do, to go to every area where he's placed us and tell people about Christ and use our gifts for the glory of God. We will see you at NYC 2017. Yes, we're already planning it, so get your money ready and I'll see you there.